Hi, my name is Dave. This is part two of Newtonian Collimation for Beginners. Um, this is a little bit more advanced. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here is how to adjust the secondary. Uh, in the first part, I demonstrated how to collimate the primary mirror, which is uh, what you're going to need mostly, most of the time. Occasionally, you're going to need to use uh, a special tool like this Allen wrench and adjust the secondary mirror up here. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll decollimate it really bad and then I'll show you how I go through the process of getting it back and tweaking it in. It's a few minutes long so you may want to skip through some of the parts and and get through it a little faster. I wanted to show you what it looks like in real time. I've not edited it. The tools I'm using are of course this Allen wrench I'm not going to be using a laser collimator in any way, shape, or form. Those are really only helpful in a limited sense. I'm not going to use this, although I could. The reason I'm using this, this is my homemade uh, little cap. It's big enough to allow my camera to look through there so you can see what's going on with the camera. Normally I would use probably something simple like this, a simple um, collimation cap like that. Uh, probably my preference would probably be to use one of these. These are nice. These are very, very nice. At the end, if you stay tuned to the very end, I'll show you what it looks like through the eyepiece when you look at a star uh, with a collimated telescope, what the, what the image looks like through a fast Newtonian. It's uh, pretty interesting. Okay, this is perfectly collimated now. This is the view through a telescope that is technically... It's collimated because the center dot in the mirror is dead on your eye, but it's the secondary mirror is way out of adjustment. Uh, this is exaggerated. You'll probably never ever see this. I had to throw this out this badly uh, in a deliberate way. I want to show you what it looks like when I tweak that back into adjustment. Yeah, I'm now going to make some adjustments to these three Allen screws here. See if I can tweak this back into some sort of reasonable adjustment. Now, there's a lot of trial and error involved with this. And I'm so far out that it's, whoa, look at that. I went nuts there, didn't I? Don't worry, we'll come back here in a minute. These are really very large adjustments. You almost never see adjustments this large. I'm, this is quite dramatically I'm overplaying this <laughs> dramatically. So you can see what's going on. I need to tighten that one, so I need to loosen these two. This game this is a little bit different because you loosen two to tighten one, so to speak. Somewhere it's getting better. I want to be able to see all three. I want to be able to see all three of the mirror clips. And that was pretty good, wasn't it? That was a pretty good move. Uh, tighten these guys up a little bit. That's too tight there. Now 
that's going to be out of collimation. What I'm really trying to do here is get the mirror clips all into view. I've got two of them. I've got all three mirror clips in view pretty well. It may not be perfect. I'm just going to tweak these a little bit. I have to tweak them all a little bit to tighten it up. I'm not even beginning to make the collimation adjustments. Now I need to get the collimation. I've got the secondary mirror all tightened up here. That's all tight. And now I'm going to collimate. This is the same old game, moving those things around until I get what I want. I'm going to enlarge this and I'm going to put some light on here so I can see what I'm doing. Pretty good there. That should be pretty well collimated. So I've now tweaked the secondary and I've collimated it. Should be pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it looks like that mirror clip is out of view again. I might need to tweak the secondary a little bit, bit more, don't you think? On the other hand, this is close enough. This will probably do. Even if I can't see that... Uh, no, actually, I just tapped it a little bit, and now I can see it. <laughs> oh, my stupid flashlight. I think I'm going to call this done. Done enough. I'm tweaking it a little bit, but that's, that's going to be close enough. That's going to be a pretty good view through the telescope, and I'm not going to have any vignetting. I'm going to be able to see essentially the whole mirror without any problem. Okay, this is a star image. This is through a well collimated telescope. Now, if you're off center, that should be the center of the view there. The camera's out of alignment a little bit, but right there, that's what you're going to see. Both inside and outside focus, you're going to see something that looks a lot like that. Those are actually a whole bunch of rings surrounding the black dot. That was an airplane <laughs> passing in front. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Okay, here we go. Inside and outside focus. This is a pretty good mirror. I want you to notice that when you go off axis, even a little bit, uh, you're, you're going to... Your image is going to get strange. The only perfect place is kind of right there in the center. I hope this demonstration has been helpful to you if you're trying to collimate your Newtonian telescope. Um, remember, this is non-trivial. I made this look relatively easy because I've done this many, many, many times, probably a hundred times. So uh, adjusting one of these things is non-trivial. 
Doing the primary adjustment, like in part one, that's not too hard. Once you get used to that, that's child's play. This part becomes quite challenging and you can get into some serious trouble with this and have endless struggles with it if you're not careful. So don't do this unless you absolutely have to. Don't do this unless that secondary is really far off and you absolutely have to do it. If you do this and your images are not good, if they're still blurry, something's still wrong with them, it's very possibly because you have a spherical mirror, uh, spherical telescopes. This is a parabolic mirror in this telescope, so it's a good quality mirror. Um, if you have a spherical mirror, like in a cheaper telescope, you probably will never be able to get good sharp images with it. So um, you can beat yourself to death trying to collimate, do all sorts of other things. You're never going to get there with a spherical telescope. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.